Hi and welcome to another video tutorial about Adobe CS4 products. This one's focusing on Adobe Encore and looking at motion menus. This is part one of motion menus. So I'm just going to look at taking a menu and all the elements, the buttons and all the bits and pieces that make up that look of the menu itself and sending that to After Effects and then we can animate those elements and then stitch together a video of all the elements being animated and then at the end of it coming onto the menu itself and it all looking very nice and beautiful. So once we've got our menu and we've decided the look of it, the feel of it and everything like that, we can select just this panel here for the actual menu itself or select the menu from the project panel go to menu and create After Effects composition. What it will do here is want to send a PSD, a copy of what you've got, and it won't affect what you've got here, but it'll just make a copy of that somewhere for After Effects to use as the template. So once you figure out where you're gonna save it, it'll open up After Effects, and before you know it, you've got already something in the render queue because it understands that it needs to render this out for you to use it. Um, it's already added a render queue item for you, but it's also gone and added this uh, composition with the menu and all the layers inside it for you. What's good about this? Well, what's good is all these elements are separated. So we can go in and decide that it's gonna take, say, two seconds just click in here for everything to come onto screen to the position that it's at now and it has to it's important to understand that this positioning matches at the end of the animation matches the positioning of the menu itself because then when you go from one to the next it seems seamless so let's go to P for position and we'll go all the way to the very start and now we can go in and one at a time we can move these items wherever we like them and we can start doing some pretty crazy stuff with them this way so I might actually not move that there I might make this one come from over here and As you can see, pretty quickly, I'm getting a pretty interesting animation happening. Okay, I'll just hit the RAM preview. Okay, it's pretty good. If anything, it's probably a little bit long. So what I'm gonna do is marquee select all of the animation keyframes and pull them in to about, and I'll set my time indicator to about one second, make it twice as fast. Now with the time indicator there and these keyframes selected, I can move close to the CTI, current time indicator, hold and shift, and they'll snap and lock onto the position of the CTI. Now you don't need that much time for it to hold so really, I'll just go maybe one or two frames more. So I might just go one, two, three, let's do five. It's just a nice number. Five, okay, so we're five frames longer than where we were. Why am I doing this? Well, I'm doing this because what I wanna do is use the CTI position as well, holding shift, and drag this work area end notch, then, in this work area section that's grey, I'm going to right click and go to trim comp work area. So now my comp is only as long as the length of or the position of the uh, in and out of our work area. Great, that looks good. Now we just save that and go back to our render queue. It's already set up for you know lossless compression we just got to send it somewhere and name it something that's actually going to make a bit more sense because it's automatically named it based on the name of the menu that we sent over. I want to call this Animate In. 
And because it's very short, we hit render, it doesn't take, doesn't take very long at all. So let's go back over to Encore, double click in the project panel to bring in an asset. We've brought in the animation. I'll select the animation uh, QuickTime Movie, go to Timeline, and it's added it into a timeline for me. Now all you need to do is set the animate timeline as your first play. So when the disc goes in, it plays that animation first, then when it reaches the end of the animation, it links to the menu. And now, if we preview this, what happens is it animates and then it goes to, it animates and then goes to the menu. And it's looking all pretty good. Now that's just a very basic, quick introduction to how to get that sort of stuff to work. Thanks again for joining me. My name's John Barry. I'll catch you in the next tutorial.